Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome to the Olympia Church of Christ. Special welcome to all visitors that are with us this morning. I'll start off with some reminders this morning. This service is being live streamed for those not attending in person. People in cars in the parking lot can tune in to 88.7 FM to hear this service. It's requested that you please do not use the church Wi-Fi today during live stream. Our search TV program is channel 11, Sunday at 7 a.m., channel 22, Sunday at 8 a.m., Wednesday at 10.30 a.m., and Friday, 8.30 a.m. The in-person classes for Sunday morning and Wednesday night service. Sunday morning class, 9.30 a.m. That's Jim Marshall with the book of Hebrews. Sunday youth class, 9.30 a.m. That's Jiwu Ryu, personal faith. Wednesday adult slash teen class is 7 o'clock p.m. That's Don Jacobs, and he's teaching vill villains of the Bible. CE bulletin for link and passwords to Zoom the above classes. Mask wearing. The elders have determined that mask wearing is optional for all who are vaccinated. This is a personal choice you make. Those who are not vaccinated, please, please wear a mask. Three Minute Thursday will be devotionals from Don and Jewu videos on Facebook available each week. See the bulletin for details. And now for announcement and calendar. Springbrook Church of Christ is hosting the 13th annual Every Woman is a Daughter Heart of Courage this Saturday from May 7th, 10 a.m. through 12.30 p.m. The guest speaker will be Renee Rena Jackson. A luncheon will follow the program. The reservation will be through email dkccrown at mac.com. It's on the bulletin. Sister, Secret Sisters will have a short meeting after services on May the 15th. At this time, you will reveal who you are to your secret sister. Please bring a thank you gift to share with the sister who has been given to you. The Change of Life cans for the Mountain State Children's Home are now available in the foyer. Funds raised will help purchase clothing and perishable food items. Please pick up cans today. Volunteers are needed to help at the table at this year's Thurston County Fair on Saturday, July 30th. We need to fill time slots between 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. Letter Carriers Food Drive is May 14th. See the bulletin board for more details. Scripture reading for this morning would be from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is comfortable, comfortable, and my burden is light. Will you please pray with me? Dear Holy Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for bringing us together this morning to assemble in your name and to glorify you, Father. We thank you for watching over us, for your love, for your concern and your care for us, taking care of us and keeping us under your guidance. We thank you, Father. We pray for our brothers and sisters that may not be here for whatever their reasons might be. We pray that you be with the speaker this morning, Father, and that his word may touch us according to your will. This we pray in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Our first song will be number 176. Galatians chapter 1, verses 3, starting in verse 3. Grace to you and peace from God our Father 
and the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins so that he might rescue us from this present evil age according to the will of God and Father to whom be the glory forever. And the congregation says, Amen. Your only son knows sin too high, but you have sinned him from your side to walk upon this guilty side and to become the Lamb of God. Your gift of love they crucify. They laughed and scorned Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're here to celebrate the victory we have through Jesus. The victory we could not do on our own, but there was one who was willing, one who was worthy. And we're going to read to prepare our hearts for the taking of the Lord's Supper. Uh, Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5, starting in verse 1 through number 14. It says, Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. And I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside it. <clears throat> then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb looking as it had been slain, standing in the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp and they were holding golden bowls full of incense in which all the prayers of the saints of God's people 
And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals because you were slain. And with your blood, you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them a kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders in a loud voice. They were saying, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. We have someone that was worthy and willing to do the unthinkable, to do that what we could not accomplish on our own. And we remember at this moment, the blood and the, the body that were given for us freely, the body which was beaten and bruised, spat upon, the blood which was his body was pierced and it flowed to cover our sins. So as we think about these things, let's not only think about what it took, but let's think about the victory that we have through him who sits on the throne. Let's pray for the bread. Father God, we thank you for this bread, which is the body of your precious son, the lamb that was slain on our behalf, Father. Even though we were not worthy and we did, did not have the strength, he, he is worthy. He has the strength to overcome death, to give us the victory. Father, we thank you for this bread. We pray that as we take it, we can reflect on the sacrifice that was made. We pray that we can take it in a manner which is pleasing, acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's pray for the cup. The Holy God, we're thankful for this blood that was shed on our behalf. Father, for giving your son the perfect lamb that would be sacrificed so that we can have the hope of eternity with you. As we take this cup, Father, we pray that you'll bless us, that we can take it in a manner which pleases you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We also take this opportunity to collect the funds that we can use to spread God's word, not through this, just throughout the community, but also throughout the world, through the missions and through our local evangelism. And um, we just want to pray that our funds are used in a way that will please God and um, bring others closer to him. Let's pray. Holy God, we are grateful for the innumerable blessings that you've given us. Father, for the blessing of your son, Father, for the opportunity that we have to share in that promise with you, the opportunity that we have to share the news of that promise with others. And Father, as we do collect these funds, we just pray that you will bless the efforts of those who are involved in spreading your word. Bless us as we determine in our hearts how we can spread your word and, and give us opportunities to spread your word and help your kingdom to grow. Father, bless us this morning as we give and bless those who have the desire to give but don't have the means. Give them other opportunities to give in different ways. So our prayer in Jesus' name, amen. amen.
The invitation song, the song after the lesson will be number 907, 907. And at this time, we'll sing number 943. Number 943. Have you a heart that's weary, tending a load of care? sure everyone knows we're very glad you're here. We want to welcome you to our worship service here in the Olympic congregation and also just to let you know we are glad we can join and worship together. So we're starting a new series today uh, entitled Unburdened. And so are we burdened by Christianity sometimes? We're supposed to receive rest when we come to Christ, according to the scriptures. But we often talk about the weight of the world. But what about the weight of doing enough, being enough? Do we think that sometimes in the church? Do we feel that? So I've asked a volunteer to help me this morning. Um, so I've got a bucket up here. My volunteer is going to hold that bucket out. 
and not let the weight burden him down. And of course, he had to get the heaviest bucket to show that he's a man's man. So, so I'll, I'll check on him periodically as we're going. So, um, so Tom, pretend that God said, if you love me, carry this burden and keep it up. Will you hold this burden for God? You love him. You want to serve him, so keep this burden up. <laughs> so he's already paid okay um we love god so hold on i told you you shouldn't got the heavy bucket um, i want to love god i want to serve him we pour our lives into people into service we really give it our all sometimes. We think things like, it's your fault if your friends, your family members aren't saved. And that's a burden some of us carry, that we have to save them. And as long as you're doing okay down there? <laughs> so... <laughs> Guilt, <laughs> shame, envy, anger, disappointment, disgust, worry, anxiety, stress, hopelessness, worthlessness, unlovable, useless. Do we ever feel those words? Do we think those words? You see, we can't carry the burden on our own. You still doing okay? I told you, you should have got the lighter bucket. You love God, so try harder. Be more. There's a song, he paid a debt he did not owe. I owe a debt I cannot pay. But I'm afraid that sometimes we change the words on that last line. And we, we owe a debt we cannot pay, but we're going to sure try harder. We're going to be more so we can show him we deserve salvation. We don't deserve salvation. You going to be okay? All right. It didn't difficult. Be enough. Look good enough. Attend enough. Do we think those things? Do we say those things in our mind? All right. So if you want to put it down, how does that feel? Feels good. All right. <laughs> That's good. Can you? Do you need help? Okay. I think sometimes we wear ourselves out. And Jesus said, I want to give you rest. Yet how come we come in here and we don't feel rest? How come we say I'm a child of God, but we can't sleep because we're so stressed. We're so anxious. We're so worried. How does that fit? It's that we've kind of gotten this mindset that I'm going to earn my salvation. I'm going to show I deserve this and we'll never deserve it. And we can't work our way into heaven. It's a gift that we accept. And of course, because of that sacrifice, because of that gift, we're going to do and we're going to serve and we're going to try. But we do that with God's strength, not our own. Because as Tom showed us, we can have the best intentions in the world. But if we just rely on ourselves, we're going to fail. He wants to give us rest. And we'll only find that rest if we trust in him. So we're going to do this series, Unburdened, for the next couple months. To look at these different things that we stress about, we obsess about. And sometimes we just need to give it to God so that we can have the rest he promises us.
you see, no matter how much we might want to, salvation is not earned. Where does the attitude come from that if we, we have to earn our salvation? Because it's actually said it's a free gift of God. So when you have your birthday, when you have Christmas, do you receive these gifts and you think, I can't accept this. I never earned it. I don't deserve your love. Is that what we think when we receive these gifts? And if it's not, then why do we have that attitude with Jesus, with God? Because it's a gift that we accept. Where do we get the idea that we've got to do more and more and more? Because that's how people burn out. And that's how people leave God's family. Is they feel like I just exhausted myself and no one else was helping. And not realizing it's a gift from God that results in our actions. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, for by grace you've been saved through faith. This not of your own doing, it's a gift of God. A not a result of work so that no one can boast. In Luke 13, 6 through 9, it says that a tree has to bear fruit. And if it doesn't bear fruit, what happens to it? It's ripped up and thrown away. And I'm afraid we have that mentality that, you know what, if I haven't done enough, I'm just worthless in the church and I got to get just tossed away. And I don't want anyone to see me worthless. So I'm going to keep working and I'm going to show that I'm going to save everyone. And I can't save anybody. All I can do is be a reflection of Jesus life. And I'm that because of what he's done for me. Work salvation is never enough, but we try. We chain ourselves with this mentality that I'm going to look good enough. I'm going to be good enough. But those are just chains that burden us and become overwhelming. The Jewish leaders were bound by law because they were going to do enough. They were going to look good enough. And then they took it further and they said, not only am I going to look good enough, but I'm going to make sure you look good enough or you're not worth it. Do we do that? Do we make other Christians think you better deserve it or you don't belong here? We can't have that attitude. The demands of the law were a burden, but they expected it. They wanted to earn their salvation. It made it easy to just check those boxes. Yes, I've done this. I've done this. I've done this. I'm good enough. And Jesus said, you brood of vipers, you whitewashed tombs. It's never been about doing enough, looking good enough, being enough. It's about accepting me and my sacrifice. And as a result of that, we're going to do out of love for him, not earning anything. Yet they did not receive him. They would not receive them. They held the attitude of heart toward Jesus that grew to mock him in his suffering, resulting in Matthew 27, 42. They said to him, if he's king of Israel, let him come down from the cross and then we'll believe on him. What a lost opportunity. What a tragedy. They knew the law. They had their whole lifetime said, I'm committed to God. Yet they twisted religion into something that it wasn't and was never meant to be. And I wanted to do this series because I want to say, please, let's not do that. Let's not make Christianity about the fact that we come in a building and we worship God. So we're better than everybody on the street. Because if we turn it into that, we're not going to be sharing with them. We're not going to be out there shining our light because they don't deserve the light. I'm so afraid of us becoming like the Pharisees. 
And this mindset of being burdened and showing I can handle it, I can do enough, I can be enough. John 1.11 says he came to his own and his own did not receive him because he didn't come in the package they liked. He didn't come the way they expected him to come. Now in our text, Matthew 11, we're looking at 28 through 30, but I want you to think about Matthew 11, 20 through 27. I'm going to read that real quick. It's kind of the introduction that we don't think of when we hear him say, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. We like that verse because we want rest. But what he says before that is he began to denounce the cities where most of his mighty works had been done because they did not repent. They did not change. He said, woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented a long time ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it'll be more bearable on the day of judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. You, Capernaum, will you be exalted in heaven? You will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. I tell you, it would be more tolerable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom than for you. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you've hidden these things from wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal. And then he tells them, I will give you rest. I'm the one who can give you rest from the burdens. I'm the one that can take that stress, that anxiety, that feeling of worthlessness, that feeling of being unlovable. I'm the one who can give you rest from all of those things. Jesus speaks these words for our lesson today and that we're going to look at through this series. He turns to the leaders of the Jewish people who'd rejected it. And he offers this invitation it's actually called the great invitation by a lot of people. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Verse 28. We've heard these things before about Jesus, but I don't know how many times I've heard it, but I don't give myself rest. I don't accept the rest offered because I have this mindset that I've got to do more. I've got to be more. I've got to reach more people. And sometimes I've just got to say, hey, let's share the load. Let's all be a part of the body, the hands, the feet, the eyes, the tongue. Let's all be that part that gets God's will done. It's not just on the eldership. And it's not just on the minister. And it's not just on the women of this congregation. It's on all of us working together and not burdening ourselves with all these things that we're freed from. Have you truly come to Jesus and accepted the rest he offers? Have you come to him? Not to just teachings and doctrine about him, but have you come to him? Because you can have been baptized, you can have been in this church for 50 years and not felt rest and not felt peace and not felt the hope that we're trying to refocus on because burdens are everywhere. And so often we just take that bucket and we're going to hold it strong and nothing's going to impact us. When Jesus has said, just put it down. I'm offering you rest. I'm offering you hope. I'm offering you peace that you can't find anywhere else. 
Some of us have shame. Some of us have guilt. Some of us feel hopeless. Some of us feel worthless. And the series is for us to think about none of those things are in Christ. And if we claim we have Christ, we can't have those things control us. God has always desired to give his people rest. We actually had that topic in our class this morning. He wants his people to have rest. Psalm 55, 22, cast your burden on the Lord and he'll sustain you. He'll never permit the righteous to be moved. Amen. Isaiah 58, 6, is this not the fast I've chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, that you break every yoke? Isaiah 41, 13, I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. 1 Peter 5, 6 and 7, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he'll exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. Isaiah 46, 4, even to your old age, I'm he. Even to gray hairs, I will carry you. I've made and I will bear. Even I will carry and we'll deliver you. That counts even for gray hair in your mustache, if you don't hair up here. It counts. He will carry us if we allow him to, and if we stop trying to carry ourselves. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, by grace you've been saved through faith, not of your own doing. It's a gift of God, not a result of works that anyone can boast. Isaiah 40, 11, he'll feed his flock like a shepherd. He'll gather the lambs with his arms. He will carry them in his bosom. Yeah. Psalm 34, 17, the righteous cry out, the Lord hears, and he will deliver them out of all of their trouble. Isaiah 41, 10, fear not, I'm with you. Be not dismayed, I'm your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Galatians 6, 2. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. When God has lightened our burdens, he asked us to do the same. We work together so that no one's overwhelmed by the burdens of this life. And then last, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. Come to me. All who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. See, we still carry a burden, but it's a burden shared with Jesus, and he takes the heaviest load while we share that yoke with him. Where are you at today? Has Christianity been a restful situation for you? Or do you, like me, say, I've given everything to God, and then I stay up all night stressed. And then I always want to do enough. I always want to be enough. I want to look good enough. I want to sound good enough. And I think it's something that drives a lot of us instead of just trusting God. He wants to give us rest. And when we accept his rest, we're going to do. But we're going to put it in perspective. We're going to realize he's got this. And I'm going to love. And I'm going to serve all I can but I'm not going to be burdened by that. It's an opportunity to serve him. Amen. I just want to ask you, where are you at today? A Jewish works backdrop defined the Israelites. That was their Christianity. I'm going to do enough. I'm going to be enough. I'm going to look 
like God's people. And yet they weren't. They just went through the motions. We did a series a couple of years ago about how we can no longer be a country club of Christians. We're a church that serves him, not because it makes us look like we fit into this group of people, but we serve him because of what he's done. We adopt sometimes the same ideas and attitude of the Israelites in that we think it's about doing enough. Does your ministry, your service, your Christian life look anything like earning God's love today? Because you're not going to do it. It's a free gift offered by him that we accept. If you're trying to earn his love, it's a trap. The beginning of the lesson, when Tom grabbed that bucket, I said, pretend God said. That's a scary thing to say, isn't it? Because God did say, I'll give you rest. He didn't say, work harder. He didn't say, keep holding that load and you'll show me your love. He doesn't say that. Amen. Hebrews 4, the word rest is found 20 times as Jim talked about in this class today. Notice verse 11. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest so no one by fall by the same sort of disobedience. Did you realize the irony in that verse? Strive to enter rest, work to find rest. It's because sometimes we don't accept rest. Sometimes we just make it about things he did not intend. God desires for us to be unburdened and weighed down. So let's not make Christianity something he didn't intend it to be. Let's not put that burden on other people. Let's let people accept his gift and let's offer that same gift by the way we love them, by the way we serve them. And as a result, we can all shine the light he intends. But if you're here today and you've never accepted that free gift, we want to let you know that invitation is available right now. If you are in Christ, if you are a Christian for five years or 65 years, if you're here and you don't have that rest we would love to pray with you we'd love to share with you some of the burden you're carrying we want you to find that rest that god intends for his people but if you need the prayers of this congregation or if you need to respond to the invitation to accept that free gift through baptism through salvation please respond as we stand and have your invitation song Hark the gentle voice of Jesus fallen, tenderly love on your ear.
Everybody can be seated. We've had two men of our congregation to come forward. Bruce comes saying, my relationship with God is not what it should be, and I need to turn it over to God. We need to give our burdens up to God so that God can help us. And so we'll be praying for Bruce in a moment. Lon comes forward and he said he wanted to confess something to the congregation about his needing God too. So we're going to let him say what he wanted to say and then we'll have a prayer for both of these men. Brother Lon. I will love the burdens of this life. To bring them down and separate me from the body of Christ. God's sermon this morning, speaking through the word of God. I just cannot resist responding to the invitation. My name has been on that prayer list for spiritual strength. I just wanted to see your face and confess the sins of weakness and the right burdens of this life to separate me from the daily law. And that's for you and his father. Pray for me. Would you bow with me, please? Heavenly Father, thank you for being a loving God, and we know that you know our hearts. But you've also told us that we should confess our sins to our brothers and sisters. Father, all of us often are overburdened with things that we try to do ourselves instead of opening ourselves up to the help and the rest that we can receive through you. Help us, Father, to be more faithful. Yes. We pray for our brother Bruce and his request that he have a better relationship with you. We know he's going to be traveling. We pray that you would be with him as he travels and give him a safe trip and bring him back to us if it's your will. And Father, for our brother Lon, he's confessed to this congregation that he needs the help of God, but he also needs our help. May we encourage him. And Father, may we understand that we do strengthen one another through our encouragement and through focusing on your will and your word in our lives. Thank you for this congregation that we can support one another. So Father, help us always to remember that no matter what our situation, whether we're with our brothers and sisters or we're facing a situation alone that you are there you're with us and all we have to do is ask for your help father we know that you have promised us that you will give us your help and you will give us rest if we will come to you and open ourselves to you help us each one to do that we offer this prayer in the name of jesus your son and our savior who makes it all possible amen Amen. Now we'll have our prayer request and our closing prayer. Um, prayer is very powerful. Um, when you think of prayer as communicating with God and it's it's not, we're, we're praying to God because we can no longer do it ourselves. And so when we pray to God, we must wait for him to do it. Just like these two brothers came, came up this morning, they can no longer do it. So they have to depend on God and it's through prayer that that happens. And that's why I say prayer is very powerful. Paul, in his letter to those at Rome, he says, I always, not sometimes, not 
part of the time, I always mention you in my prayers. And he said, God is my witness. So when we think about our prayers to God, he is witnessing, he is listening. He is waiting for us to come before him to pray, not only for ourselves, for others. So when we look at this prayer list and see all the many concerns and names on it, know that God is faithful and he is just and he will answer our prayers, but not in our times, in his own time. So let us be prayerful, not only here in our services this morning, but be prayerful all through the week because we know that prayer works. And so let's remember all those who for their help and for friends and family and for spiritual guidance, for Thanksgiving, for traveling, and for bereavement. So as we go throughout the week, let us always put them in our prayers that we have daily, hourly, and as Paul says, always. So if you will, bow with me in a word of prayer, and we will continually pray. Our most gracious and kind Father God, Lord, we are so thankful that we have such a loving Heavenly Father. And Father God, we just ask that as we go from this place, this time of uh, fellowship, this time of studying your word, this time of prayer, that Lord, that we continue to have faith in you, that we continue to um, trust in you, and that Lord, the things that come in our lives, that, Lord, that Father, that we don't try to, to do them ourselves, but we rely upon you. Father, we just pray that we are faithful and faithful to the end. Be with us always, guide us always, and that, let your loving kindness shine upon us through this life into the next life. And Father, we just pray that those that are on our prayer list at this time, that Father, that you would be with them, guide them, and allow them to know that you are in their lives. Father, we pray for those who are having health problems. We pray for those who have friends and family with health needs. We pray for those for spiritual guidance always, Father, that they would always continuously uh, trust in you for their guidance. We pray for the ones who need uh, thanks, who have thanksgiving for situations in their lives. And Father, Father, we pray for those who are traveling. Bring them back to us safely, Lord. And Father, we ask that you be with the families who have loved ones who have passed on. We ask this in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you. 